we did a study uh, where we first of all interviewed patients about how they perceive their, their visual loss. With this eye disease glaucoma, the received wisdom is that uh, when people have advanced vision loss with glaucoma, that they go around the world looking through a, a tunnel. But what our research showed is that patients don't perceive their vision loss in that way. And then we were in the happy position of translating those results into the form of some patient information. Um, and this led us to develop a, a, an app that patients and their families can use to kind of get a better idea about the very subtle symptoms of vision loss that, that affects that particular eye disease. The app that we've developed is called Glaucoma in Perspective and it's uh, available on iPad and Android and it's something that's really useful for patients and their families to find out a little bit more about how these patients perceive the world. We have a few different sections of the app. We've got Tell Me About Glaucoma and each of these sections has information about glaucoma. So we also have a section demonstrating what it might look like to have glaucoma from a patient's perspective and we can select one of a number of different scenarios and we can draw on where the patient's visual field loss is. So we can see that if we just draw the loss on one side because the patient's other eyes compensating, they can still sort of see things in that area but then if they lose their visual field on the other side as well, things start to disappear. So the kettle there disappeared. We can also look at an example visual field and what might happen if glaucoma goes untreated in this patient. My research centres around um, dry age related macular degeneration and how it affects people's day to day lives. So rather than the number of letters that someone can see on a chart, which is not really what patients care about. Patients care about how their eye disease actually affects what they can and can't do. In the big button test, what we're interested in is what kind of everyday scenarios people with dry macular degeneration might find difficult or sort of would make them feel anxious or uncomfortable. I show participants a series of videos, all showing day-to-day -day activities. Participants have a big red button in front of them, and what I ask them to do is, if and when the footage shows situations that they would find difficult or would make them feel anxious or uncomfortable, I ask them to hold the button down until that situation has passed. My current program involves uh, uh, developing an uh, interactive mapping tool which we are trying to show the relationship between the glaucoma disease and the patient's social economic status. Every patient has a very few results. By looking at the value of the mean deviation, we know how severe the disease is. And based on the postcode, we can get an IMD score, which is short for index of multiple deprivation. So the lower the IMD value, the, the less deprived the area is and the, the mean deviation of their view field result is also very low. Another follow-up project is to look at the distributions of the GP and the optums, why they, they're choosing to distribute in different locations, and how does that affect the disease of glaucoma. In this experiment, we're using uh, the Toby eye tracker to uh, track each participant's eye movements. Um, so in this part of the experiment, each participant will watch uh, nine videos. Um, so three videos, there will be a visual field distortion applied on the left-hand side. Another three videos, it would be applied on the right-hand side. And then the final three videos, um, it would just be a video shown with no distortion. And what we're looking at um, is the, if there is any difference in eye movements um, when a person is watching a video with a distortion compared to without one. We needed groups of videos that are actually quite similar, so we have three clips of football, three clips of gymnastics and three clips of cycling. It's gaze contingent, so depending on where the participant's looking also depends on where the distortion would be applied on the screen. Clinicians will often see uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of patients um, and they will get these visual field printouts and we're looking at different tools um, that can help the clinicians visualize this data 
and hopefully they can then rank patients and help with prioritising um, the clinical care. We're hoping to actually be able to use this in clinical practice. So most of the time, especially in the mathematical and statistical things, it sort of goes into papers but never actually gets used. So the idea is that we would like this to be actually used in the clinics. But what we always try to do with our research is to try to translate it into something that um, uh, the clinicians can use. That's always very difficult to do and it's a difficult process to come up with an idea and then see how that might then uh, translate into clinical practice. So those little things when you see like a research idea you know, turn into something that's practical and useful from a personal point of view is, is really uh, you know, very pleasing.